Rise Up, Reflections on Redemption. What I can say about this message is that it is about coming home. Nicholas will deliver this powerful message that might compel you to rise up. I also can't forget to mention the exceptional music selection, musical selections you'll hear today spread throughout the service, and they will be delivered by Kelsey Matthews, Kara Matthews, Dashani Francis, and Abigail Smith. And anyone else who I may have forgot to mention, including our adult participants, I'd like to thank them as well, and our offering bearers. The AY team is also grateful for the support of the musicians and praise team, our AV personnel, our sponsor, Elder Esther Small, our first elder, Luone Wilds, and our esteemed pastor, Dr. Ernan Norman. We hope that you leave this worship experience feeling alive and energized, ready to rise up and follow our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless. Sabbath Church. Offering bearers, please stand. Today's offertory reading comes from the North American Division and was written by Heather Thompson Day. I remember it like it was yesterday. I got a call from a close friend saying that they had gotten an incredible job in an incredible city that would be their dream come true. I celebrated with my friend while also feeling the sting of pain from my own disappointment from recently being rejected from yet another job for which I was qualified, yet was not found worthy to possess. Disappointment and rejection can be hard things to deal with. One thing that God taught me and my family during that season of our lives was that though it may not be my turn for, ble for the blessings of my dream job, it is always my turn to serve God and those around me by doing my best, no matter what position I'm in. One thing that has blessed me and many others during tough times is the support local churches offer to those who are struggling just to make it. I've been in small group Bible study where other members prayed for me and supported me in many ways, both with physical needs and spiritual. Today's offering will go to support our local church budget, which supports ministries that are heartbeat to our church all week long, not just on Sabbath. The Lord, the Lord Jesus himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us pray. Dear God, please help us and uh, to support each other every day. Thank you for this wonderful day. In your name I pray, amen. amen.
Amen. Jesus speaking, but Jesus said, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Young people, it is your time. We want you to come down front. And Sister Brianna Small, big Sister Brianna Small will give you a, a message, a beautiful story. So come on, boys and girls. Get your ones, your fives, your tens, your twenties. All those high denominations, come on down. Collect them as you come and come and hear a beautiful story. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Um, I'm going to try that again. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. That's better. So I'm sure you've heard it said multiple times today already, but this is Easter weekend, right? Tomorrow is Easter. So when you think of Easter, what do you think of? Easter bunny. Easter, bunny. Easter eggs. Easter eggs. Chocolate eggs. The cross. Jesus died for our sins. Mm -hmm. So I heard it said at one time over here, chocolate eggs. Um, is chocolate the only candy? There's a lot of candies on Easter, isn't it? Yes, jelly beans are a popular Easter candy, right? So, oh, that's cool. So jelly beans come in many different colors, right? Yeah. Um, so did you know these colors can help tell the story of Easter and remind us of what Jesus did for us all those years ago? So I have some jelly beans to show you. When you see these green jelly beans, what do you think of? Grass? Grapes. Mm -hmm. One more. Hmm? Jesus? Okay. When I see these, this color green, I think of plants. And plants are often found in gardens. And there's a garden in the Easter story. It's called the Garden of Gethsemane. 
This is where Jesus prayed the night before he was put to death. In his prayer, he asked God, his father, to take away his suffering if it was possible. But ultimately, he surrendered to God's will. He knew what had to be done, and he did it for us out of love. The orange jelly beans can represent coins. The coins are really silver, but we can use our imagination. Jesus was betrayed by his friend and disciple Judas, who, who sold him for just a few coins. After his prayer in the garden, Jesus was arrested and taken away. He was beaten many times and was put on trial. The next color is purple. It's your favorite color? It's my favorite color too. <laughs> um, purple is seen as the color of royalty. Another thing that they did to Jesus was mock and make fun of him. They put a crown of thorns on his head and placed a purple robe on him because he was called king. Of course, they were only mocking him and didn't think he was actually a king, but we know that Jesus is true royalty. He is the son of God and the king of kings. Next is the red jelly beans. Um, what? Okay. Um, what does anyone? What do? What do you guys think the red represents? Raise your hand. Hmm? Red flowers. Red blood. Okay. That's it. That's the answer. Blood. So, it represents blood that Jesus shed that day on the cross. His blood was spilled out, and by that blood, our sins are wiped clean. The next color is black. The pack of jelly beans that I got didn't have black, but you can imagine. Um, so the black jelly beans represent sin and darkness. After Jesus died, it was a very sad and dark, dark time for everyone. They realized that the man who they just killed really was the son of God, but it was all part of God's plan. Jesus came to the earth to die so that sin and darkness could be destroyed forever. That leads me to the white jelly beans. Um, the white reminds us, I did not click. The, right, the white reminds us of a new start. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, we can be forgiven and wiped clean from our sins. We become as white as snow. White can also represent the linen that Jesus' body was wrapped in before being placed in the tomb. body okay yes um, next is yellow what do you think yellow represents Go ahead. the Sun that's correct the yellow represents the Sun when the Sun rose on the third day some women went to the tomb where Jesus's body was um, only to find that it was empty not only had the Sun risen that day but the Son of God had risen as well. Jesus was alive. The last color is pink. And pink is a very bright and happy color, right? This represents the joy that we have, that Jesus is alive, and the hope that we have for a future with him in heaven. So, if you eat any jelly beans or see any of these colors tomorrow, I hope you can be reminded of the Easter story. Remember Jesus' sacrifice and how much he loves you. Would anyone like to pray? Jesus, thank you for saving our sins. Thank you for everything you've done for us. In special your name I pray, amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for the story of Jesus on the cross. Thank you for that we do all the good things. Thank you that we do good will. Amen. Amen. Dear Jesus, <coughs> thank you for the elephant looking man. You guys can go back to your seats.
Good afternoon, church, and happy Sabbath. Welcome, everyone, to Youth Day 2024. Today, we celebrate energy, passion, and potential of our young people. Our theme, Rise Up, reminds us that we are called to rise above the challenges of our world and shine the light of faith, hope, and love. As we worship, learn, and connect together, may we be inspired to rise up and become the leaders, innovators, and change makers that God has created us to be. Let's celebrate the present and past of our church, and may our time together fuel our spirits to keep rising up. So it's also come to my attention that we have some first time visitors today. So if when I call your names, if you could please stand up and give a wave and greet the church, that'd be nice, please. So Rihanna and Felix Claxton, if you're here. Oh, wait, I see him right there. Happy Sabbath. And uh, Penella Bowman. Happy Sabbath. We're glad to have you all and uh, enjoy the program. We also have some, we also have some other visitors here that I don't think we got names for. So if you're a first time visitor here at Northboro, would you stand up and introduce yourself to us? First time visitors? Amen. 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 Would you, would you say who you are? We got a microphone for you. Oh, I got you, baby, I got you. Hey everybody. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy My name is Joseph. I am from Marlboro, Massachusetts. Amen. Welcome. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Hello, everybody. My name is David Watkins. Invited here by Cliff here. Um, thanks for having me. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, church. My name is Alan Tully. My wife is sitting beside me, Janet, and we are from Milford. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I, we'll come back to Mika and Brian in a second. No, I think right down, right down, right down front. Who else? No, Cliff. I think right down front. Right down front. This young lady right here. Hi, my name is Naya from Living Waters SD Church in Dallas, Texas. Amen, amen. Happy Sabbath. We want to thank you for visiting with us. Who's, what we got here? Oh, this gentleman right here, yes. Oh, my name is Paul and I've been here before. Amen. And we also want to welcome back some of our former members who we haven't seen for a long time. Maybe we can have them stay. I think it's Mika and Brian. Amen. Happy Sabbath. No, Raquel's okay. We saw her last week. Two weeks ago. We saw her, we saw her just now. Who else are we missing? Sister Peggy, it's good to see you. Amen. Andrew. Carmel. Rene Janelle, yes. Who else are we missing? Whose sister? Mika's sister. Mika's sister, where are you? Okay, oh yes, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. And this, and who we have here? Who is this? Okay, amen. So we are happy to have all of you here, and we know that you will stay behind for church dinner and our concert, amen? Amen. Thank you for well, uh, worshiping with us today. Happy Sabbath, church. Look at this room. You've picked the right day to celebrate and worship with us at North Bro. So in honor of Youth Day, Community Guest Day, we wanted to take some time, um, especially with the theme of our church service being Rise Up, to honor a few people 
who have really risen up in, in our community, our church community, and in their surrounding communities to really support the youth in what they do day to day. So I'm gonna ask for a couple people to come up and help me. If Abby, Nia, and Hadia could join me. And while they're coming up, I just wanted to uh, remind us of what it says in Matthew 25, where it says, whatever you do for my brothers and sisters, however unimportant, you have done it for me. Okay. I'm also going to ask three guests who um, don't know they're going to be called up here to join us as well. Can I have Cliff, Lou, and Elma join me up here? Uh, and so uh, in honor of ladies going first, we're going to have um, Hadia talk about Elma. And I want to say, is just a representative of what Elma is. I think we had to keep her at church today as she wanted to serve her community um, and people even more. Hadia, will you say a couple words? Happy Sabbath. Um, this is true. Mommy was actually trying to leave and I had to convince her to stay. She wanted to go visit somebody. So mommy does many things. She works as a nurse at the ICU where she's particularly gifted at providing peace and comfort to those who are critical and vulnerable. She also loves mission trips and goes on them whenever she can. Her dream is to retire and serve through missions as a nurse. She has mothered many children that she did not birth and has consistently provided food, clothes, and more to family and church people who are not even in this country. She loves kids and has a unique way of making every child feel safe. Children literally just walk up to her in the grocery store and smile and talk to her like they're best friends. She's so humble and truly one of, if not the best human I know. She's a walking representation of the love of God and she really lives by faith without works is dead. She's always quietly but consistently pouring from her cup because she believes deeply that God will always keep hers full. She truly believes that it's about what you give, not what you get. Love you, Mommy. Okay. My dad has worked in the human services industry for over 10 years and currently serves as the fleet coordinator at the Guild for Human Services in Concord, Massachusetts. In his current role, he's responsible for training new staff on transporting students currently enrolled at the Guild and helps oversee after, afternoon dismissals, ensuring a smooth transition from school to the houses. These are just a few of his current responsibilities. Prior to this role, my dad serves as a student service coordinator where he coordinated communication between guild staff, families, collaterals, and various state agencies. He supported the families, advocates, and students in making the appropriate referrals and applications to services and entitlements that would benefit the students. My dad also helped with providing birthday and Christmas gifts as well as helping with students' day-to-day -day needs. My dad is well known for his sneaker game as he has a love for sneakers and this allows him to engage with the students. My dad goes out of his way to check on the students and says one of his coworkers, David Watkins, and he makes sure each kid has a smile on their face at the end of each interaction. My dad has a caring nature and an ability to bring smiles to the faces of those around him, making him a bright presence at the guild. Lou has worked with youth for almost 20 years through the Henry Lee Willis Center in the NFI, Massachusetts. At Henry Lee Willis, he worked with the social and economic needs of minority populations within the community in, asso in association with other partners, serving youth and families. 
At NFI, he provided safe, secure, predictable environments in which youth develops the skills necessary to efficiently manage the emotional behavior and or substance abuse problems that may have been the source of their commitment to the agency. So I want to thank, uh, first of all, my, my readers here today who did a fantastic job um, honoring three really impressive people in our church family. And what I'm going to tell you is please make time today to go and thank them for what they've done to the com church community and the community around them. Thank you. Good morning, church family. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I have been blessed so far, and we're just getting started. I have the pleasure um, of introducing our three wonderful young speakers. As we gather on this Easter Sabbath to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, I am deeply honored to introduce you to our three remarkable young individuals who embody the spirit of rising up in faith, talent, and dedication. Our first speaker, Christiana Isabella, or my Bella Boo, a shining star in the seventh grade at Abby Kelly, known for her impeccable sense of fashion and creative flair. Christiana dreams of a future as a costume designer. She is also part of our Pathfinder Bible Bowl group who recently made the Nationals. Bella understands the importance of perseverance and resilience in pursuing her dreams, echoing the sentiment that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. For Christiana, rising up means facing challenges head on, never giving up and trusting in God's unwavering support. Next, we have Gavin Miranda, an outstanding student at Gibbons Middle School with leading roles in his school plays and a coveted spot in the district choir competition. Gavin showcases his talent and dedication to the arts, but his aspirations extend beyond the stage. Gavin is torn between pursuing a career in acting or law, recognizing the power of storytelling and persuasion in both fields. For Gavin, being a Christian entails living a life of truthfulness and kindness, aligning with the principles of our faith, to him, rising up means overcoming challenges with God's help, striving to be the best version of oneself. Lastly, Nicholas is an exemplary eighth grade student at RJ Gray Middle School in Acton Boxborough Regional Schools. A passionate weather enthusiast, Nicholas dreams of one day becoming a meteorologist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association in Miami, Florida. <laughs> Yet beyond his academic achievements and career aspirations, Nicholas understands that being a Christian is, more, is about more than just your personal success. For him, it means embracing God's word and exemplifying Christ's love in all that he does. As we listen to these three remarkable young speakers today, let us be inspired by their stories of faith, determination, and perseverance. May their testimonies remind us that with God's guidance, we can rise above any obstacle and fulfill our potential. Let us join together in prayer and celebration as we lift our hearts in gratitude for the blessings of this Easter season. Thank you. Today's scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 20. Jesus continued, there is a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the son 
got together, all he had set off for a distance country, and there squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have had food to spare? And here I'm starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and filled him with compassion for him. He ran to his son and threw his arms around and kissed him. Let this word reside in your hearts and let it bless you. Thank you. Good morning, church. Picture this, the climax of an epic tale where our hero emerges triumphant against all odds. Of course, I'm talking about the scene that Bills are celebrating this weekend. I'm talking about our superhero, Jesus, who died for our sins, rose from the grave, and ascended into heaven. In this message titled Breakout, The Reflections on the Resurrection, I like to zoom in on the scene where Jesus is stepping out of the tomb. The account in Matthew chapter 28 tells us that God sent an angel to roll away the stone that sealed the lifeless body of Jesus. Why didn't Jesus use his superpowers to teleport out of the tomb? We know he didn't do that because the stone was rolled away. And we know he stepped out of the tomb and walked back into a world full of people that denied him 
abandoned him, mocked him, beat him, and killed him. My sisters and brothers, it wasn't enough that God brought Jesus back from the dead. The resurrection story is also a lesson on stepping out of the tomb. You see, the tomb represents our fears. Fears is one of Satan's most effective weapons. He knows that when we fear and worry, we remain focused on ourselves, our faith gets weaker, and we settle for a life that falls short of our destiny. When we don't face our fears, that's like staying trapped in the tomb. It's safe, but it's not living. Let's talk about the three types of fears that we all face. The first fear is being accepted. Have you, have you ever felt scared of not fitting in? Like wondering if people will judge you for how you look, dress, walk, talk, or even what you believe in? That fear comes from not knowing or forgetting who we are. When Jesus got tested by Satan in Luke chapter 4, Satan kept asking him, if you're really the son of God, do this or say that. But Jesus already knew who he was, and he knew that he was meant to be. It's nice to be accepted. But God didn't create us to fit in. He made us to stand out, to be the light in the dark places, to be the salt of the earth. That's who we are. In Ephesians 2 verse 10, we are called God's masterpieces created for his good works. That's who we're meant to be. The next type of fear that keeps us trapped is the fear of not having enough. Most of us live in a time where food is cheap, well, maybe not healthy food. Where we can get cheap clothes, well, maybe not brand name clothes. And most of us, I think, have a roof over our heads. So why do we worry so much about these things? One reason is that radio, TV, and social media ads tell us that we don't have enough and that we need more to be happy. And most of us look over the fence at what our neighbors have, and all of a sudden, we don't appreciate the things that we've already been blessed with. Church family, God has promised us throughout the Bible to supply us with all our needs. Amen. In Genesis 22, Abraham calls him Jehovah Jireh which means the Lord will provide. In Psalm 23, David says he is our shepherd, we shall never want. In Philippians 4, Paul says, regardless what I have or don't have, I am content because I can make it through anything through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. The last type of fear that holds us back is the fear of failure. That as we learned from previous youth days, Trying and failing is what's necessary for moving forward. It's how we learn and grow. I enjoy singing, dancing, and creating art. All of that takes practice. I don't get it right the first time, but I keep at it because I trust the process. And even when I make a mistake on the big stage, I keep going. My failures don't define me. My persistence is what, is what defines me. If you want to achieve something badly enough, you must make an effort and persist. In Philippians 3 verse 14, Paul says, I press toward the mark for the prize of a high calling. Any prize we're chasing, any high calling worth answering. will require you to press. Do you want academic excellence? Press. Do you want to get better at sports or music? Press. Do you want a healthier body and a bank account? Press. Do you want to hear God say to you, well done? Press. Queen Esther feared that the king would kill her for appearing uninvited in the throne room, but Esther pressed because it was her time. <laughs> Bessie, Col Bessie Coleman grew up in a poor girl in Texas in the early 1900s, attended a segregated school, and worked in the cotton fields. But Bessie wanted more. She felt a high calling, literally. She, she wanted to become a pilot, and she had, but she had three strikes against her. She was black, she was Native American, and she was a woman. But Bessie pressed. She went to France, and where she learned to become a pilot, and she returned to the United States and became fam famous for her daredevil flying in air shows. Now, they were calling her Queen Bessie and Brave Bessie. Church family, I leave you with the promise in Isaiah 41, verse 10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I'll strengthen you and help you. I'll hold you up with my victorious right hand. 
I encourage you to tap into God's victorious power to escape the tomb of fear and step out into a life of faith, freedom, and purpose. May God bless you. Good morning, church. When we think about Easter, we remember the incredible story of the resurrection. 
Jesus was changed from death to life, regained his supernatural powers, and went back to heaven. The resurrection is a powerful example of restoration. What is restoration? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines it as bringing or putting something back to a former or original state, or to renew. In this message titled, Hang On, Reflections on Restoration, we will explore what it takes to be restored and renewed in our own lives. We find the, world, we find the word renew in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 40, verse 3. 31. It states, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will not soar like, they will soar like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not grow weak. Speaking of eagles, did you know that the bald eagles have made a stunning comeback in Massachusetts? In 1982, there was only one pair of eagles nesting in the whole state. But because of the efforts to protect them and to stop the use of harmful chemicals that were killing them, there, were, there are now over 80 pairs of eagles in the nesting in our United States. Have you heard the inspiring story of how the eagle renews itself? If it's true, there's a lesson in it for all of us. Apparently, when an eagle turns 40 years old, its beak and claws have grown so long that it can no longer hunt very well. So it, can, it has to make a tough decision. Either die and go through a, or go through a very painful process the last five months. The process starts when the eagle bashes its, off its old overgrown beak against a rock until it breaks off. Then it will rip off its old overgrown claws and pull out its old feathers. At the end of the five months, the eagles get new beaks, claws, and fresh new feathers. After that, it will live for another 30 years. Just like that, eagles, just like the eagles, Job in the Bible suffered greatly before he experienced his restoration. Job was a very wealthy man, but Satan tested his faith by taking away all his wealth, his, fam his family, and even his health. But Job refused to turn his back on God. Job remained faith faithful, but he was also confused and couldn't understand why he was going through all of this. Eventually, God shows up and talks to Job directly. He reminds Job that he is all-powerful and that, he, that there are many things about the world and life Job cannot fully understand. Here are three lessons we can learn from the story of Job. Lesson one, hard times don't always mean God is punishing us, but if we hang on through the hard times, we will learn to trust him even more. Amen. Lesson two, even if we don't understand why we may be going through hard times, we can still trust him. In Job chapter 39, God asks Job a series of rhetorical questions. Rhetorical means he already knows the answers and was trying to make a point. God says to Job, is it your wisdom that makes the hawk soar? Is it your command that the eagle rises to the height that makes the nest? God, God is a powerful, God is him. He knows what he's doing. That brings us to lesson three. We can trust God to restore us. At the end of the story, God gave back Job his double of everything that he lost and more. It wasn't just Job. After all the wrong that David had done and lost, he, he had also experienced God's renewal. In Psalms 23, three, he writes, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Just like David, just like Job, and just like the eagle, Jesus went through terrible pain to, and loss, but he did it for us. Isaiah 53 says that Jesus was a, man, was a man of suffering and familiar with pain, but he took up our pain and carried our suffering. That's, what, that's what's called grace. 
Because of his grace, he was beaten and bruised for our sins. And by his stripes, by his wounds, we are healed. Amen. Healing, that's just another word for restoration. Church family, I know life can be hard sometimes. It can be tough to keep going when you're stressed out by school or work, hurt and disappointed by fake friends or even family members, or frustrated that things aren't going your way. But the same thing, but the same God who made the hawk and the eagle has big plans for us. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, God says, for I know the plan I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, to give you a hope in future. So I encourage you today to hang on, just like the eagle, just like Job, hang on. You will be restored, you will be renewed, and you will soar, to, soar again. God bless you. It's love and mercy washing over all our sin. And the people say, and the people say, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna.
today, I want to ask you a question. Why did Jesus die for us? The answer can be found in John chapter 3, verse 16. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A wage is something that has to be paid. Jesus paid the price for our sins with his life. And when someone pays what you owe, that means they have redeemed you. But what does it mean to be redeemed? In this message, rise up, reflections on redemption. I want to show you God does not just cancel the debt we owe. He does us something even more amazing than that. Let's find out by exploring the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. Why was he called a prodigal? Because he took the money his father was saving up for him, left his father's home and his father's love, and went away and wasted all the money. Maybe he left because he didn't like the rules and responsibilities in his father's house. Things got so bad for the prodigal son that he took a job feeding pigs because he had nothing to eat and nowhere to go. Then he got so hungry that the pig food started looking delicious. <laughs> That's when you know things are really bad. At that point, he made a very important decision. In Luke 15, 18, the prodigal son says, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me, make me like one of your hired servants. His father could have said, you disrespected me and wasted my money, and you will have to work for me as a hired servant. Instead, the father ran to him, kissed him, and said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on my son, and put a ring on his hands and sandals on his feet. The robe and sandals are clothes only a son would wear. And in those times, a ring was something only a ruler could wear. Brothers and sisters, Jesus didn't die for our sins just so we can go on living ordinary lives filled with fear and stuck in hard times. His ultimate plan for us was that we rule with him as princes and princesses in his kingdom. In 2 Timothy 2, 11 and 12, the apostle Paul says, if we die with Christ, we will also live with him. And if we endure hard times, we will also reign with him. Oh, yeah. To reign means to rule. But to rule doesn't mean to boss people around. Yeah. Rulers manage the kingdom just like our parents manage the home, pay the bills, drive us around, buy us clothes, treat us, and everything else. To rule means to serve. In reality, ruling is a responsibility, not just a luxury. When we rule with Christ, he gives us responsibilities. We can clearly see that illustrated in the parable of the talents found in Matthew 25. That story is about the master of a household who took a trip and left three of his servants with valuable items, which the Bible calls talents. When the master returned, two of the servants had invested and multiplied their talents. The master said to them, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We all have talents, 
Are you good at science or math? Keep studying, get better, and make new discoveries that improve people's lives. Are you good at music, art, writing, or performance? Practice, improve, and let your art bring joy to people who hear, see, or read it. Are you good at taking care of others? Find more opportunities to serve. Serve more. Give more, be more, and more will be given to you. Amen. Let me remind you of Psalms 23, 5. You anoint my head oil, my cup run over. Amen. Honor and blessings. That's how God works when we rise up and follow him. Amen. As I close, I want to ask you one more question. Do you know your place? Is it A, in God's kingdom, ruling with Christ and eating his daily bread? Or B, in the pig peg, craving their food? If your answer is B, but you want it to be A, you must rise up and go to your father. Yeah. He's waiting to welcome you back home with open arms and restore you to the position of son or daughter and ruler in his kingdom. What, wherever you are, make the decision to rise up. Before we can escape the tomb of fear, we have to rise up. Before we can soar, we have to rise up. Before we can rule in his kingdom, we have to rise up. And when all is said and done to you, two can hear these words spoken to you. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God cause all my
Can the church say amen again? Amen. Woo! Haven't you been blessed today? I know I have. They say they have to do a, a special appeal and a blessing, and I think I can do that. But um, Mr. Nicholas. Amen. On behalf of the elders board, you can preach anytime you'd like. Amen. I have a couple of openings coming up in the next quarter. Maybe we should put you down. Yes. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you, Bella. You guys did a marvelous job. Amen. In fact, if I could, and I know sometimes they don't want to, all those who participated in today's program if you would come up front, up here with me, that would be great. Please, 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 yes. All of you who participated today. The only person that can't come is Nia because she's back there. But all the young people, come on up, please. The deacons as well, too. Come on. Everybody. This is for all of you. All the young people who are participating today. Nia, if you want to come too, you can. I know that your father's back there. You, you're part of it too. You're back there. There you go. Come on. Amen. Amen. I think I said last time, the future is now, right? There you are, right here. This is our church. The church of tomorrow. Amen? All this talent. And I know that they're going to continue to use it for God's glory and honor. My appeal is this to you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. What does it say? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. 
in all thy ways. What? Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. As you go forward in life, continue to do those things which will honor God. That's my appeal to you. Keep serving. Doesn't have to always be here at Northboro, but wherever you go, remember that you are a light shining in darkness. Keep shining bright. Keep pushing forward. Keep rising up. Amen. Amen. And my appeal to you as a congregation is to continue to pray. Continue to encourage. Continue to support financially, emotionally, whatever you can do, the young people of our church. The future of tomorrow is right now. Amen? So with that, let me just offer a brief prayer and we will continue. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for these young people, for all the good work that they have done in your name. Lord, we ask that you will continue to be with them in their future endeavors as they go through school, as some are graduating and going on to college, as some will be graduating from college, going out into the working field. Lord, we ask that you would continue to be with them. Help them to be a bright light shining in a world of darkness, to brighten the corner where they are, Lord. Help them to always remember to rise up and to always portray your love to each and everybody that they come in contact with. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jeremy and Brenda, thank you. And Marcy. Amen. And the kids' sisters. Amen. Musicians, everybody, thank you so much. Who am I? Who am I missing? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, AV2. Where's Mia? Thank you. Amen. You guys can be dismissed. We're going to have our, benefit, our closing prayer. And then we're gonna go. Oh, closing song. Okay. You guys can go down. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. After the song.
gathering, we came before you with hearts full of gratitude and minds enlightened by the reflections shared today. We thank you for the powerful message messages delivered by Bella, Gavin, and Nicholas, each shedding light on our faith in you. Lord, we are reminded of the triumphant resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, as Bella shared with us today. May we never forget the significance of his victory over death and the power it holds to liberate us from the tombs of fear in our lives. Grant us the courage to step out boldly, knowing that you have called us to be lights in this world and stand, to stand firm in our identity as your children. We are encouraged by Gavin's message of restoration, comparing our journey to that of the eagle and the prodigal son. Help us to trust in your plan for our lives and in the midst of during trials and uncertainties, knowing that you are faithful to renew our strength and to restore us to a place of abundance and purpose. And finally, Lord, we reflect on Nicholas's teaching on redemption and our call to rise up and fulfill the roles you have prepared for us in your kingdom. May we embrace our positions as heirs with Christ, teaching others of the lessons of being humble and having diligence, and eagerly anticipating the day when we hear those precious words, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm. As we depart from this place, may the truths we have heard today resonate deeply within us, guiding our steps and inspiring us to live lives that honor and glorify you. Bless each person here with your peace, your grace, and your love now and always, and also bless the food that is prepared downstairs. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Let the church say church say amen God has spoken let the church say amen let the church say to remind us that there's fellowship dinner downstairs there's a concert afterwards so hang around come back 
and greet each and every young person that participated and show them your love. God is great. We love you and we thank you for participating in today's program. Amen. Thank you. 